See, Ken, what are you all doing here? <laughs> oh, I know what you're doing here. And, uh, Ken, I know that back when uh, Max was out there left, there were some around here who said things would never be the same and, uh, you know, put it bluntly, we would go to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> we didn't, and I think that's because maybe what Max had was catching, but Whatever it was, uh, no, you've done a, a marvelous job. And I think it's time now that you get acquainted with Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> and when Jennifer's old enough to understand, I think she'll be very proud of all that you've done. And Sydney, there's one thing you can be awfully happy about now. He's been associating with some terrible people. <laughs> They're on a place called the hill. And, uh, <laughs> Shanty Irish, things like that. <laughs> the only thing that makes me able to smile and uh, continue in this vein is the fact that you won't be too far away. You're right. You'll, you'll be within reach. Thank and, uh, of course, come to think of it, he'll probably still be associating with some of those same people. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think you'll be keeping the same hours. I think you'll, you'll have to get used to him around the place. I used to try to tell him to go home. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's done a wonderful job. And, uh, much of what we've accomplished wouldn't have been accomplished, and the hot job has gotten harder, not easier, as time has gone on. Uh, some of those stubborn ones dug in their heels a little bit, and uh, we'll just be forever grateful. Ken, you've done a great job, and God bless you and all success in the, in the future. Thank you. And uh, now, on with the party. Let's <laughs> <laughs> If I can say a few words, Mr. President. Number one, everybody refers to you as the great communicator. While that's true, I want to say that you're also the best damn lobbyist this country has ever had. <laughs> Number two, the Vice President is right at the top also, and if I had done my job a little better, he still wouldn't have voted in the United States Senate, and I know he would have appreciated that. <laughs> I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, in a lower middle class neighborhood, and I never dreamed that I would have the opportunity to serve my country in the way that you've given me. And I've given everything I've had during these last three years. Yes, you have. 
and it's the highest honor that I could ever have. We've come a long way. The fundamental change that you promised back in 1980 is set in motion. You've been able to accomplish that, sometimes in harmony with the Congress, but we've always come through on vote after vote. It's because of your leadership, all those phone calls, all those meetings, all that time and all the resources. <laughs> I want to salute a few other people, if you don't mind, Mr. President. The team of Howard Baker and Bob Michael and Trent Lott and Guy Vandejack and Tom Leffler have meant everything to the success that we've had on vote after vote. They are part of your team and it's the Republican team in the House. We've also benefited even before 6 o'clock occasionally from Tip O'Neill's help and certainly before and after 6 o'clock from Dan Rostenkowski's help and so many others on some of those critical votes. I want to salute uh, all my colleagues on the White House staff, uh, led by the Chief of Staff of the Free World in Texas, Jim Baker, <laughs> and to Ed, and to Mike, and to Bud, and to all the members of the Cabinet. It is a tremendous team. I want to salute the most overworked super achievers in the White House, and that's been my staff, and that includes Max, who led us in year one, and B, who is going to succeed me. Finally, I want to thank the person who's drawn me the maps to get home <laughs> late at night, and who's lived through so many of those critical votes, standing at my side, and has sacrificed so much, and who deserves, after almost two years of marriage, a real honeymoon. My wife said <laughs> look forward to a good re-election effort. I am confident that not only will you be re-elected, but with a renewed mandate, with continued control of the Senate by our Republicans, and by increased support in the House of Representatives. To all of you, a million thanks for your friendship and for your confidence, and we'll be together often. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> Special assignments. Thank you. Brooklyn, is your name? <laughs> I can't resist. I have to tell a little thing about it. I don't know how they handled his name in Brooklyn. When I was a sports announcer, I learned following baseball teams, and the Dodgers were then in Brooklyn, that in Brooklyn, you don't buy oil to put in your car, you buy Earl. <laughs> if your name is Earl, it comes out oil. <laughs> and I, Broadcasting a game one day when a pitcher named Wait Hoyt from Brooklyn slid into second base and was injured in sliding into second base. And there was a stunned moment of silence in the crowd. And then one voice was raised that was audible in the stands when he said, Geez, heard his Hoyt. <laughs> <laughs> well, carry on and have, have fun. Thank you very much. Well, Miss, you come around sometimes just to visit. Absolutely. All right. I'll be here often. Don't turn in your pants. I won't. <laughs> Thank you again. Okay. Thank you very much. Hi. Hello, Mr. President. Good to see you. Thank you. My golly. All-star team did that. Hello, George. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Same to you. Howdy, Jim. Make sure those people better be ready. My golly. How are you? Good to see you. Nothing out of there. Jim? What have I done? If you're fixing it, it worries us. <laughs> I mean, I, that should be my question. <laughs> I, I, I should be saying, how am I doing here? It's getting a little hectic for a few days here. 
I think you've been around in Missouri. I've spent most of the last two weeks in the state. And I don't, I mean, to say the least, the public is not exactly.